this is a story that needs to be told. From New York, up in Harlem. Jackie Reed goes inside her story. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Sybil. Good morning, Sherry. Good morning, Kim. Good morning, everybody. Just wanted to give a quick shout out to myself. Tell everybody to go to vegansexycool.com and get your vegan life. Check out all my great articles on there when you get a chance. Uh, Tom, the TV show Glow, have you heard of this? Yes, I love Glow. Right? It's a popular show on Netflix. I love it. It's a great show. I just had their second season. Yes. Um, It's about the history of women in wrestling based in the 1970s. Mm -hmm. But long before that era, there were black women in the ring dominating the sport of wrestling. There's a new documentary based on their story. It's called Lady Wrestlers, The Amazing Untold Story of African-American Women in the Ring. I'm going inside her story with the film creator, Chris Bornet. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Jackie. Good morning, Tom Joyner and family. Good morning. Well, let me ask you right off the bat, why did you want to tell this story? Because this story is uh, it's a long story. These women have faded into obscurity, and when I found out about these women, I just thought their story needs to be told not only here in the United States, but internationally. They just have a story that transcends race, and it just needs to get out to the world. How'd you find out about it? Well, I grew up in Columbus, Ohio, which coincidentally is hosting the Democratic presidential debate tonight, and I never knew about these women. Yeah, I never knew about these women. Go on, Hello? go on, Chris. You say you never knew about okay. these women? Yeah, I never knew about these women. Um, you know, I'm African-American, but I grew up in the African-American community, but never found out about them until I started working as a print journalist. And a friend of mine, Terry Anderson, who's also an African-American man, he called me. Uh, he works in public relations, and he said, hey, you should do a story about this really interesting lady I grew up with. Her name's Ethel Johnson, and I think she was some kind of wrestler or bodybuilder. So I sat down and interviewed her. This was in... December of 2005, and she had all these amazing stories of going all over the world as a professional wrestler in her in her teens in the 50s and 60s. And when she traveled, like to Australia and Canada and places like that, she'd be treated like a queen. Mm. But when she traveled in the South, she'd have to go in the back door of restaurants. You know, she'd have to deal deal with Jim Crow segregation. So I wrote her story for the Columbus Dispatch, the local daily newspaper. And when it came out, Arnold Schwarzenegger, the famous actor. Uh, he holds a fitness expo every March here in Columbus, and his people read the story and, and called me and said, hey, we want to give Ethel Johnson a Lifetime Achievement Award. We never wow. knew women like her existed. Ethel, by this time, was a retired grandmother who did not like the limelight, and she said, thanks, but no thanks. Mm-hmm. And I just thought, I said, her story and the story of women like her needs to go beyond a single newspaper story. And I just thought, it, I, I always say it didn't take Orson Welles to their story was cinematic. So I asked her, I said, Miss Ethel, would you be willing to be interviewed on camera? And she said yes. So in the course wow. of my research, I found out that there were dozens of African-American women who were world-famous world professional wrestlers back in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. What was Miss Ethel's wrestling name? Um, her actual given name, I, well, her she was married, so her given name was Ethel Harrison, but her she actually used Ethel Johnson as, as her wrestling name. Oh, yeah? they didn't have They didn't have flashy names? Well, some some of the African American women did. Like there was one called, I believe, the African Pussy Cat, and there was Sweet Georgia Brown. Of course. So there were some that used, you know, kind of outrageous uh, wrestling names. But Ethel's two sisters were also wrestlers. Her older sister Babs Wingo recruited Ethel, and then um, they recruited their younger sister Marva Scott. So they just used different last names because they didn't want the audience to know they were sisters because they thought, oh, if they know we're sisters, they'll think we'll be easy on each other. Was was far from the case. They were very very competitive. Did these women fight each other, other black women, other African-American women, or did they ever fight white wrestlers? Yes. Yeah, so a lot of times. So let me back up a little bit. So the, how women's wrestling got started here in Columbus was a promoter, a white man named Billy Wolf, who plucked from obscurity this, this white female wrestler named Mildred Burke and made her the first world women's wrestling champion. So he saw that. Mildred would need competitors, and there weren't just women wrestlers walking around, you know, on every, you know, every street corner. So he started recruiting women into his business, and he was inspired by Jackie Robinson. And he thought Jackie Robinson helped bring a lot of attention and, um, you know, a lot more excitement to baseball. And he thought the same would happen if he started recruiting black women. So that's how we re- originally recruited Babs Wingo, and so he would send these women out all over the world. And yes, they would they would wrestle each other, but Babs. Ethel's older sister was the first 
she did the first interracial championship with, with Mildred. It was sometime in the 50s. So they would be on cards with white men. They wouldn't wrestle white men, but, I mean, they'd wrestle black women. They'd wrestle white women. And Ethel talks in the documentary how some, some of the, the most um, blatant racism she got was from, uh, was from other women, the white women who said, you know, we don't want you going on the mat with us. Mm-hmm. Um, Ethel, the daughter of uh, Marva, Ethel's younger sister, Kim Martin, talks about when her mother went to Japan, the Japanese wrestlers would tease her and say, you know, Negro, Negro, uh, greasy hair, greasy hair. So they, they got a lot of uh, racism from the other women, And wasn't, wasn't there one, like, top billing with Gorgeous George and, and all of those types of yes, people? Yes, so, yes. So back then, um, the, the wrestling promoters would, would put men and women and black women and white men on the same card because they wanted to cause controversy. You know, that's what the wrestling business is all about, sure. is being controversial and sensational. So, yes, a- absolutely. Storylines, because I watch Glow, and the yes. and, and and the thing about and the thing about wrestling is there's always a storyline. Did they have racist storylines? I don't know if they so much had racist storylines, but they had tag team partners, and yes, some of it was choreographed. But I mean, these women were real athletes. Billy Wolf, he had this formula. Actually, um, a journalist named Jeff Lean, who wrote this book about Mildred Burke. Um, talked about this formula that, that, that I came across in my research called Sex, Muscles, and Diamonds. So the women had to have sex appeal. They had to have real athletic ability. They had to know all the holes. And the diamonds was they had to look like glamorous movie stars outside of the ring. They weren't allowed to wear slacks. It was sort of like how Barry Gordy uh, kind of had his Motown acts go through that etiquette training mm-hmm. where they, had, they weren't right. allowed to smoke cigarettes. They weren't allowed to, you know, use profanity or badmouth people. So they did have storylines, but it was it was much less choreographed and much less, you know, quote unquote fake than it is today. Chris, you had to be you, a real athlete. How do you track down the footage that you have for this documentary of these women actually wrestling? Yeah, so actually, um, so Ken Martin, Marva Scott's daughter, actually gave me some of the footage. And then I did a lot of the research at the University of Notre Dame, and that was through Jeff Lean, who um, wrote the book about Mildred Burke. He said, if you're serious about doing research about wrestling, you need to go to the University of Notre Dame. So they have this library with, uh, there was this wrestling promoter named Jack Pfeffer, who was, I call him an organized pack rat. And luckily he <laughs> saved everything. I mean, there were just bankers boxes and bankers boxes worth of, uh, you know, old newspaper, old newspaper clippings wow. that were clippings and press clippings and footage that was just sitting collecting dust until I came and said, hey, you know, I'd like to unearth this stuff for a documentary I'm doing. And how long did it take you to go nice. through all this stuff and do the, 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 the groundwork as far as, and, and then the editing of all this? How long yeah, is that so process? It took, it took years, and not, not because it actually took that long, it's because I, you know, I was working a, a day job. You have a real job, so yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly, right. yes. Yeah, so I was, um, you know, it took, I started working on the documentary in 2006 and finally just finished like a final cut in 2018. So it was working on and off. And we had like a, a rough cut in the screening for the ladies and, and for the for the wrestling women and their families in, oh. in 2012 at a historic theater here in Columbus named Lincoln. And they were just so, the women and their families were just so complimentary and were saying, oh. thank you for getting our story out there. We appreciate you you know, getting us the, 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 the due that we that we never got. And a lot of these women have not been, you know, inducted into Wrestling Hall of Fame and they, and they need to be. And if if they had they not liked to be if they had not liked the film, do you think they could have taken you? Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> even they if, still even have it. Chris, Chris where can, they could, they where can where can we see the movie, Chris? It's gonna be screening, where can uh, we see it? Thing. It's going to be screening this Thursday in Philadelphia, and it's going to be released soon on streaming and DVD. So LadyWrestlingMovie.com is where you can find all the details. Lady? Lady Wrestling WrestlersMovie.com? LadyWrestlerMovie.com, yes. Yes. LadyWrestlerMovie.com. Okay, Chris Bornet, thank you so much. What a great story. Thank you all. I love thank it. you so much for having yeah. me on. Thank you. That's wonderful. I, I apologize for blurting in. I'm Kim Whitley, and I'm from Cleveland. I apologize. And she could she could take I one of them. <laughs> I love you. Yes. <laughs> thank you. And I love Glow on Netflix. I'm probably the only person I've ever known to watch it. <laughs>